Welcome to the video program, Suspected Unapproved Parts. What can you do? This video was created as the result of a partnership between the FAA and private industry to increase awareness regarding the problem of suspected unapproved parts and explain specific actions that each person can take to help solve the problem. A recent FAA administrator stated that the FAA is absolutely committed to remove the threat of unapproved parts to aviation safety. But the FAA cannot do this alone. They need the help of you, the aviation industry. At every step of the process, from the initial design of a part to its final installation, everyone involved plays an important role and can help maintain the high standards of safety that we have today. What are you doing to ensure that no improper parts are installed on aircraft? If you replace a propeller drive gear, do you make sure that the part was produced by an FAA production approval holder or came from an FAA approved source? If you work for an air carrier, a repair station, an FBO, a parts supplier, a distributor, or anyone else in the aviation industry, you can help. Know your own organization's supply system. Know what your responsibility is to determine parts condition and documentation requirements. Watch for suspicious parts. Report any suspicious parts to the FAA. Criminals who traffic in substandard aircraft parts are attempting to avoid the monitoring systems of both industry and the FAA. As a result, there is a concentrated effort by both industry and the FAA to keep unapproved parts out of the aviation community. In August 1995, the FAA convened a task force and instituted a Suspected Unapproved Parts, or SUP, program to proactively address the problem by providing inspector training, distributing information, enhancing reporting procedures, instituting aggressive enforcement procedures, and processing investigations. What are the risks of using unapproved parts? Most importantly, using an unapproved part on type certificated aircraft can jeopardize the safety of passengers and crew. One substandard bearing seal spacer could initiate a series of failures that result in the total internal failure of an engine during flight. Unapproved parts can undermine the structural and operational integrity of an aircraft, causing increased stress on all components over time. By using unapproved parts, however unintentionally, manufacturers, repair stations, operators, and mechanics risk their reputations. If a failure occurs, they are often automatically held responsible. Legal action brought against the parties involved could damage or even disable their operations, whether or not they are responsible. There are also economic implications. If an operator finds unapproved parts on their planes, they must pay the cost of removing the part and possibly delaying or canceling flights. If a repair station or mechanic finds they have used unapproved parts, the cost of recalls, parts failure, and or stoppage of production may result. The FAA recognizes three categories for all parts. An approved part has been designed, produced, and maintained in accordance with FAA regulations and has the documentation to prove it. Approved parts are the only types of parts that are authorized for installation on U.S. registered type certificated aircraft. An unapproved part is defined by the FAA as not meeting any one of the requirements of an approved part. In other words, if there is any impropriety in the design, production, maintenance, or documentation of a part, it may be unapproved and should not be used until substantiated. A suspected unapproved part or SUP, is a part that is suspected of not meeting the requirements of an approved part. In other words, these parts may be deficient in quality or lack documentation to show where and how they were made. These parts must be isolated when they are discovered. Typically, FAA-approved parts are produced under a Type Certificate, or TC, 
a production certificate, or PC, a technical standard order, or TSO authorization, or a parts manufacturer approval, or PMA. Usually, a manufacturer must possess a PMA for each part that it makes. Be aware of two special cases. Parts made for foreign aircraft registered in the U.S. must be made under a bilateral agreement with the air operator's country of origin. The FAA also recognizes what's known as a standard part. These parts could include fasteners, nuts, and bolts that have been manufactured in compliance with recognized industry standards. But beware, since bona fide standard parts are automatically approved, in some cases manufacturers may take the expedient route of representing certain parts as standard, when in fact these are parts that should be subject to quality assurance and FAA surveillance. In other cases, parts represented as standard are only standard for a particular manufacturer. All of these parts should be identified through appropriate markings and documents that can be verified by the FAA during routine inspections. Industry and government have joined forces to fight the problem of unapproved parts. In 1994, a group of more than 40 representatives of manufacturers, operators, repair stations, and distributors came together to form the Industry Suspected Unapproved Parts Steering Committee. They conducted an extensive study of areas relevant to aircraft parts, including the approval process, buying and selling practices, and documentation procedures. Their recommendations to the FAA have made a significant contribution to elimination of unapproved parts. This is an ongoing committee. In November 1995, the FAA created the SUP Program Office, AVR-20, to serve as a single point of contact for information and guidance on the SUP program. The goal of this office is to not only prevent unapproved parts from entering the aviation system and being installed on aircraft, but to purge the system of any unapproved parts. AVR-20 maintains SUP-related information and works in close coordination with law enforcement agencies to achieve these goals. The Aviation Suppliers Association is an organization concerned with those companies involved in selling parts, such as brokers, dealers, and surplus sales outlets. Their voluntary accreditation program is described in Advisory Circular 00-56, this program enables this group to demonstrate conformance to a quality system standard sanctioned by the FAA. These organizations are working to solve the problem, but ultimately manufacturers, distributors, repair stations and operators are in the best position to prevent such parts from ever entering the system. Here's what you can do. Know your supplier. At a minimum, a legitimate supplier should have a publicly listed address and telephone number. If you are purchasing from a new supplier, ask to see what certification they provide and how they assure the quality and documentation of parts they ship before you conduct business with them. Be wary of suppliers who produce parts for non-aviation industries or who produce parts off-site. Examine parts. If you are a production approval holder, you are required by regulation to have proper procedures and test equipment in place to verify that the parts you produce meet type design. Every repair station must have a receiving inspection system that verifies the integrity of all parts before they are installed. OEM part numbers alone do not guarantee approval. There are many signs to watch for that signal a part may in fact be unapproved. Wrong logos or trademarks. False, missing, or improperly attached data plates. Incorrect or missing part and serial numbers, including military part numbers. Identification tags that have stamp overs on part or serial numbers. Required markings that are improperly located an altered or unusual finish, or non-standard packaging. A part with any of these characteristics should be regarded as a SUP and should not be installed unless appropriately verified. If you are a distributor, 
you should have documentation that traces the history of all the parts that you sell. Examine paperwork. Paperwork holds important clues as to the legitimacy of a part. For repaired parts, FAA regulations require that there be paperwork certifying airworthiness. Examine all documentation carefully to make sure that it is complete and genuine. You might have reason to suspect fraud if you see a wrong letterhead, illegible or missing signatures, or signatures of people who don't exist. Backdated documents, tests that postdate shipment, or an understatement of life limits. Whiteouts. Military part numbers change to civilian numbers. Data that doesn't accurately reflect part condition. Be alert to all of the possibilities. Demand assurance. If you purchase parts, you are entitled to demand assurance from your supplier that all their parts meet the requirements of an approved part and comply with regulations. This will help to ensure your compliance with FAA regulations when installing these parts. Knowing your supplier is one of the most reliable defenses against unapproved parts. Be suspicious of prices too good to be true. Prices well under market value may be an indicator that the part may be unapproved. Such parts may be scrap or over life limits parts that have been reworked and possibly given false documentation. The solution? If the price is too good to be true, check carefully. Several types of documentation can verify that a part is approved. If the part comes from a production approval holder with a production certificate, parts manufacturer approval, technical standard order, or approved production inspection system, it should be accompanied by appropriate documentation. Acceptable documentation includes FAA Form 8130-3 and a material or product certification statement from the company if it is signed by an authorized person. If the part comes by direct shipment from a company that supplies parts to a production approval holder, look for appropriate forms of direct ship authority, such as a letter. For parts that have come through an approved repair station, the expected documentation is Form 8130-3. You can also accept a maintenance release tag if it is signed by the repairing organization and contains an FAA-approved repair station number. For parts imported from Joint Aviation Authority member countries, JAA Form 1 should be attached. Soon, the European Aviation Safety Agency will use a similar document, called EASA Form 1. If the part is from Canada, the equivalent documentation is Transport Canada Form 24-0078. And if purchasing standard parts, insist on either a company certification statement or test reports. If insufficient documentation accompanied the part, request them from your supplier. If they are still unavailable, do not install the part and submit a SUP report. At times, aircraft parts are represented in as-is condition. It is not contrary to FAA regulations to sell or purchase an as-is part, but be careful it is now the responsibility of the installer to determine its airworthiness. Parts represented in as-is condition are usually not considered a suspect part. Remember, as an individual, you can be held personally liable for parts you install. And the use of unapproved parts, even if installed inadvertently, can jeopardize the entire aviation industry. A rule of thumb when handling parts is... When in doubt, don't install, investigate. Now, just a few words about reporting a SUP. Normally, suspect parts are reported to the SUP's office on an FAA Form 8120-11. However, the office will accept a report by phone, fax, email, or in any other manner convenient to you. When reporting a SUP, Please give as much information as possible and include copies of all pertinent documents if they can be obtained. The form and instructions are available on this CD in Word format. 
Also, a SUP can be submitted through the FAA Safety Hotline. The number is 1-800-255-1111. The FAA office maintains a website to keep you informed of SUP issues. The website address is www.faa.gov slash avr slash SUPS. The site provides easy access to an electronic version of the SUP reporting form, the SUP advisory circular, inspector handbook bulletins, flight standards information bulletins, and unapproved parts notifications. You can also link to useful sites that provide detailed information on parts manufacturer approval holders, accredited distributors, and the SUPS steering committee. In closing, remember, it is a cooperative effort by you, our aviation partners, and the FAA that is making the difference with unapproved parts. Thank you for watching this program. And remember, safety is everybody's business. Never install a part that is suspect. Be fully confident that the parts you install meet the FAA definition of an approved part.